Today, we're learning 10 easy to do video transitions in After Effects. Yo, it's Herman here back on the Olufemi channel. And when I first started video editing, I was always looking for quick and simple ways to make my video stand out. Using video transitions has been my favorite way to do this. And I'm here to share 10 go-to transitions that I still use to this day when it makes sense for my edit. We're starting out with the very first transition I learned because it's not only super easy to do, but it's also a great way to add intensity to your scene. All you need to do is create an adjustment layer, apply the fast box blur effect to it, and then create keyframes with different blur amounts. Just a heads up that I'm assuming you know your After Effects basics as I go through everything. If you don't know what keyframing is, then please pause this video and check out my After Effects beginners tutorial by clicking that little pop-up over there. Now for the keyframes, I'm alternating between a low number and a high number to create a bit of a flicker effect and just making sure that these keyframes are happening where I want the transition to happen between my two shots. Change the blur dimensions to either horizontal or vertical, depending on your taste. And there you have one of my favorite transitions for music videos, promo videos, or high intensity commercials. Next up is the wipe transition, which is one of the easiest transitions to do in After Effects. You'll see this used pretty often in motion graphic sequences and even reality shows for something super simple and clean. Just highlight your second clip by clicking it and then go into the rectangle tool. Draw a box out of frame first, which will create a mask if you've highlighted your clip. Go to the drop down menus of your second clip to reveal the masked path, and then add a keyframe just a bit before where you want the transition to happen. Move your playhead over a few frames for when you want the transition to end, double click the box that you drew, and then expand it so it reveals the whole image. If I play it back, it looks kind of like a PowerPoint presentation that I made in elementary school. So let's easy ease those keyframes by highlighting them and then hitting F9. Go to the graph editor, which is this button over here. Make sure you're looking at the speed graph and then drag the handle so that you have this nice hill that you'd want to go down with a snow sled. Okay, I might injure myself on this one, to be honest. Now you've got this polished transition ready to be used in your next video. Now you can do variations with the same technique by having it wipe from bottom to top or even diagonally. With how much you can do with this technique, it might be what the kids call a sleeper. Okay, only I call it that. If you are a fan of glitchy eye-catching visuals like I am, then you're gonna really love this one because it's a transition that a lot of people know and now you will too. The RGB split transition is first accomplished by highlighting both of your clips and then pre-composing them with Control-Shift-C. Duplicate this new composition twice by hitting Control-D so that you have three layers in total. We're going to apply an effect called Shift Channels to all three layers. For one of the layers, have it so that the take red from is set to red, and then turn off the blue and green ones by clicking full off. Have the next layer, take green from, set to green, and then turn off the red and blue. Finally, the last layer will set to blue for take blue from while having the red and green off. Now you've got three layers separated into different color channels, red, green, and blue. To glue them back into a normal image, set the blending mode to screen for all three layers. Now, before you start typing in the comments that I wasted your time, because we're right back to where we started, we want to introduce one more effect that's really going to make this transition happen. Let's apply the wiggle position effect to one of the layers, and let's keyframe the wiggle speed and wiggle amount so that it starts at zero before we want the transition to happen. Move the playhead to the transition point and bump those numbers up to something that looks good. Oh, oh God. Let's just do 20 and 50 for now. Move the playhead to where you want the transition to end and set both numbers to zero. Now copy the wiggle position effect and transform effect and paste them to another one of the layers. Play it back and now you've got a sick RGB split transition. Now, if you don't like how the edges of the frame are showing during the wiggle, then apply the motion tile effect and shift it to the very top of your effects list. Check off the mirror edges box and then bump up the output width and output height numbers. Now you've got a transition that has stood the test of time because I've seen this effect used since I first started video editing and it's still incredibly popular to this day. Now I wanna take a quick break to congratulate you for getting this far because I have to admit that was one of the tougher transitions to learn in this video. All the best transitions usually require a bit of work but if you're looking for the fastest and most convenient way to add cool transitions, then templates are your best friend. I recently made one that lets you instantly get cool analog glitches and did all the hard work of setting up the complicated hardware and project files so that you don't have to. All you do is drag and drop the transition on top of your footage and you're done. It makes me wish that I had beginner-friendly templates like this when I first started video editing because it would have saved me so much blood, sweat, and tears. Mostly tears. Check it out if it sounds like it's for you and let's get into the fourth transition. Let's ease back in with a transition that doesn't even require any effects, which makes it one of my favorite 
effects. All you have to do is highlight both of your clips and hit the shortcut T to bring up the opacity. Just like what we did with the fast blur flashes, we're going to alternate between high values and low values so that the clips will flicker between the two shots. All you gotta do is play it back and now you've got another high intensity transition. Here is a simple transition that also uses a blur effect and some keyframes. This time we'll be using the camera lens blur effect, which wasn't around when I first started using After Effects. I would purposely throw my shots out of focus at the end of a take and then snap it back into focus when revealing a new scene. At least that was my excuse for missing focus. Now we can do it all in After Effects by just creating an adjustment layer and then adding the camera lens blur effect to it. Keyframe the blur radius so that it starts at zero, just a few frames from when you want the transition to happen. Move the playhead over and bump that blur radius up to add another keyframe. Then move your playhead over and have it go back to zero. Now you have a smooth transition that feels like you threw the camera out of focus for a brief moment and then snapped it back into focus to reveal a new scene. The punch zoom is a dynamic way to feel like you're pushing through into the next scene. It honestly feels like a POV of the Kool-Aid man. Highlight both of your clips and hit the shortcut S to bring up the scale. For clip one, keyframe it so that it starts at 100 and then scales up to something like 150 at the moment of the transition. Clip two will end at 100, but start a bit less than that, like around 80. Then apply the motion tile effect to your second clip. And just like what we did with the RGB split transition, we want to hide the edges of the clip by checking mirror edges and then bumping up the values of your output width and output height. Easy ease those keyframes so it doesn't feel like a PowerPoint presentation. And let's go back to the graph editor for clip one by clicking the keyframe and then clicking that graph editor icon. Pull the handle from the left and tuck the handle on the right to get this gradual ramp up. Let's go to the second clip's graph editor to adjust those keyframes and do the opposite. Drag over the right handle and tuck the left one. The last thing we wanna do is enable motion blur by toggling motion blur for both layers. If you don't see the option, just click the toggle switches and mode button at the bottom. Let's play it back and get that dopamine hit for accomplishing another sick transition in After Effects. This next one also uses the motion tile effect and it's the perfect technique for creating a really seamless transition. First thing we wanna do is apply the motion tile effect to your first clip. Check off the mirror edges box and bump up the number for the output width and output height. Let's also copy and paste this effect to our second clip. Highlight both clips and hit the shortcut P to bring up the position. Let's keyframe the starting position of your first clip by hitting the stopwatch, moving our playhead close to the transition point, and then moving our X position so that the clip moves left. This will automatically add a keyframe that I'll want to move over to the transition point. For the second clip, let's keyframe the ending position and then go to the start of this clip before we move the X position to the right. If we play it back, it looks like the camera pans to the right, revealing your second shot. Remember, no PowerPoint presentations. So let's highlight those keyframes and hit F9 because that is the secret sauce to making your animations instantly look pro. Now let's do what we did for the punch zoom effect and go into the graph editor for both clips so that we can create a ramp up for the first clip and then a ramp down for the second clip. Now our whip pan is way smoother and you can even toggle motion blur to glue everything together into one extremely satisfying transition. Now this next one can be done in a variety of ways, but it all comes down to the same principle. A graphic flashes on the screen to distract the viewers for a split second. Just grab any graphic you want to use that's in the style of the video that you're working on. In this case, I'm just using this retro sticker pack. Drop it in your composition and shorten the layer so that it only lasts about one or two frames. Duplicate the layer and move it over a few frames so that you get a bit of a flicker effect. Now adjust the scale of the first graphic layer so it's a bit bigger. And maybe even add a blur on top of it to spice things up, I don't know. Creativity is all about experimenting. Now you have a graphic that looks like it flies in as it introduces a new scene. If you want to get crazy, add more graphics that pop into different parts of the frame and only have them last about one or two frames as well. Now you've probably seen film burns in videos that take you back into time where After Effects would have just sounded like witchcraft. Thankfully, the only burn here won't be at a stake. So with just a few mouse clicks, let's make a fake film burn effect between your two clips. Create a new adjustment layer and click on the pen tool to create a new mask. You're going to roughly draw the shape of a film burn by harnessing your inner Picasso and making sure that the mask path is keyframed around where you want the transition to happen. Go to the next frame and shape that mask like putty so that it's another abstract shape. Do the same thing for the next frame, giving you a total of three keyframes with different mask positions. Let's trim the adjustment layer just to keep things neat and tidy. Next, you wanna drop the curves effect onto the adjustment layer you were just working on and raise up the curve line so it looks pretty faded and bright. Let's click your adjustment layer and hit F to bring up our mask feather. Bump that number up so the edges of your mask are super soft. 
Now we're going to introduce some color to our film burn by creating a solid with the shortcut Control y Burns usually have an orangey reddish hue, so let's choose something close to that color. I try to be efficient, aka lazy, as much as I can, so we're gonna reuse that mask we drew on the adjustment layer. Just hit M to bring up the mask, highlight it, and copy and paste it to this solid we just made. You can make some small adjustments to the mask path and feather before going to the blending mode and switching it to screen. You could also duplicate this layer and switch the color to something more yellowy by hitting Control shift y to make changes to the solid and just play with the mask feather and mask expansion so that it doesn't spill everywhere as much. Now, if you want a more filmic look to your transition, you could always add some noise by creating a new adjustment layer, trimming it, applying the noise effect, and playing with the amount of noise. I find 15% to be a pretty good spot, but hey, creativity has no rules. I recommend unchecking use color noise though, so that it doesn't look like you just bumped the ISO up way too high on your camera. And here you're left with a sick film burn transition that's been a really popular one to use for that kick of nostalgia. But maybe you're not going for vintage and you're looking for something a little more modern and stylized. Now the final transition I wanna share with you is one that I came up with by combining three effects that I love using in After Effects, and I think you're just gonna really like it too. First, let's pre compose our two clips by hitting Control shift c Very similar to what we did in the RGB split and punch zoom, we're going to apply the wiggle position effect and keyframe it so that the wiggle speed and wiggle amount gradually increases, and then decreases as it reaches your second clip. Make sure to highlight the keyframes and hit F9 to smooth out the motion. No, PowerPoint presentations. Apply motion tile and place it at the top of your effects. We're solving the same problem mentioned in the RGB split transition where we want to avoid the edges of the frame showing. So let's hit mirror edges and increase the output width and height. The final effect we'll be dropping on this layer is the echo effect. Change the number of echoes to something like five just to start, but the amount is totally up to you. You can also set the decay amount to whatever you like, and it basically means that the lower the number, the more transparent the echoes will be. This is gonna make sense when you play back the clip. Lastly, we want to adjust the echo operator to either maximum or minimum, and it really depends on what looks better to you on your footage. Now it is time to smash that spacebar button the same way I'm sure that you smash the like button on this video so that you can watch back a new eye-catching transition you've learned. Now, I don't think you can go wrong with any of these 10 transitions on your next creative videos, whether they're music videos, commercials, or promo videos. Now, if you're looking for 10 dope transitions for music videos, then you can click on this video to watch that. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.